Hello， 大家好，我是陈汉 Siri。呃，今天咱们要聊的话题呢是关于转基因的话题。其实转基因呢，在国内是非常具有争议性的，包括国内网上各路名人也好，各位专家教授也好，以及咱们的政府部门对这个话题纷纷有自己的看法。呃，但是可能由于这背后错综复杂的利益关系，民众一时之间难以判断到底谁说的是真，谁说的是假。那么转基因食品到底是否安全？转基因食物到底能不能吃？我们对转基因食品又应该抱有一个什么样的态度？带着这样的话题，我今天来到了世界的知名学府英国。剑桥大学，在我身后呢，就是英国剑桥大学的植物科学系。等一下，我们就要就此话题对英国剑桥大学的教授 David b a l k e r 我们进行一个专题采访。走，咱们进去吧。Is it safe for human to consume junk food? Well, I think all of the evidence on balance indicates that it is safe.、Um, you can always find in the scientific literature papers which will support one view or the other. Yeah. I mean, I could look in the scientific literature, and I will find papers that support the idea of telepathy, right? Yeah. But I don't think you'd want to base your telecommunications strategy on. Scientific papers supporting telepathy, and similarly, you can find in the scientific literature papers which will tell you that GM food is dangerous. Yeah.、Uh, but if you look at the evidence as a whole,、uh, the evidence to me on balance says that it's safe. So, is there any risk to human health? I think there's no risk to human health. Okay.、Um... So, like some people argue that if you plot the consumption of junk food with, let's say, heart disease or diabetes, you can clearly see a positive relationship between the two. Does it mean like the junk food is the reason, the cause for all、oh, these certainly, diseases? Certainly not. So probably also correlated、um, with heart disease, heart disease and diabetes、um, could well be a change in diet. Maybe you're eating more. Maybe you're drinking more alcohol. Maybe you're taking in more high-fat foods.、Um, so I think what you'd want to do is to say,、um, if there is a correlation, we know that high-fat foods, drinking more alcohol,、yeah. eating more food, we know that these are causal factors in heart disease and diabetes. So can you rule out that those are the causal factors、um, between the increased diabetes and heart disease? And the answer would be no. So there's no reason to invoke、um, uh, genetic modification as the cause. Some people worry about the long-term effect, because, like, you can say、uh, you wouldn't die if you just had one or two. But what about the long-term effect? Maybe I, after 30 or 50 years, it can show up some negative effect. Well, I'd have to ask myself, why do you think that there, that it would have a long-term effect after 30 years or so? For example, like DDT was believed to be safe, but now it turned out to be disaster. And、yeah. now scientists are telling us junk food is safe. Would be the same case for junk food. Well, again, I mean, you can always invoke unknown unknowns. Yeah.、Um, but if we, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to make it back home this evening because I could fall underneath a bus or something like that before I get back there. That's an unknown unknown. But Am I going to stay in this building just in case that might happen? No, I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to go home. I've got no reason、um, to anticipate that. that There's、happens. always unknown. You can't. There's un- always unknowns.、Yeah. So the only rational way to approach the future is to say, have we got a basis for thinking、um, that this technology will have an effect in 30 years' time? And the answer is no. A gene from、um, a bacterium is made up of the same A, C, G, and T as our genes from a plant. Yeah. So, as far as the plant can tell, this is this is a gene. It doesn't、yeah. know the difference. So, there's no real difference. There's no basis for thinking、um, that there will be an effect in 30 years' time. Um, okay, and is there any risk about these gene crops? About like the environment effects, the genes may get into wild plants. Well, they probably will if the crop 
is able to cross pollinate yeah. with a native weed species, then for sure the genes out of that crop will transfer into the weed species. Yeah. Um, and that's always been true. So if I used conventional breeding to transfer a disease resistance gene into a new variety of crop, that disease resistance gene in a conventionally bred variety would always have the ability to transfer into a weedy species. So these things like always happen naturally, it's not the new thing. So these generally. things always happen naturally and it's it's not a new thing. Grow out our conventionally bred disease resistant varieties. Undoubtedly the genes will have transferred from those into the crops into the wheat species. Yeah. But it um, didn't have an untoward environment. So is there any like real risks? There are lots of rumors about GM crops. Yeah. Yeah, so what is the true concern about this technology? What is it? I think there's no valid reason for concern about this technology. But why do we have to modify these plants? Why can't we just have a conventional food? We always want to make agriculture better. Agriculture is one of the most invasive technologies that we have. It occupies a large area yeah. of the land, land uh, particularly in densely populated countries like the UK and like China. Yeah. And so what we want to be able to do is to use that land as efficiently as possible. We also want to make sure that um, the environmental damage caused by agriculture is as little as possible. So we want our crops to um, grow well on minimum fertilizer. If we can use GM to achieve that, um, then that would be a good thing. If we want to um, reduce the amount of pesticide that we apply to our crops, because the pesticides have an effect on the health of the farmer, yeah. they have an effect on the um, wildlife uh, in the natural environment. If we could do that by having GM yeah. crops that are resistant to pests and diseases, then surely that's a good thing to do. Yeah, um, but now currently GM is not approved in the UK. Yeah. Do you support a GM crop to be commercialised here or not? I think they should be, and I think that, well the reason why they're not supported in the UK is to a large extent due to the um, European yeah. uh, process, approval process, um, that is some people have described it as dysfunctional. I don't know if you saw there was a report from a committee of members of Parliament that was published earlier on this year. Uh, in January. In, published in January. That's yeah, right. it's just right before my exam. Okay. So I think I definitely read that. Okay. Well, the report was very critical um, of um, the government in the UK. It was critical of the non-governmental organizations and it was also critical of the European Commission and the European Parliament. So basically what this report was saying is exactly what I'm saying to you. There's no valid reason for concern about this technology. Yeah. Um, there is actually reason to be optimistic um, that that technology can have benefits for, um, for agriculture and by failing to use this technology, we are failing to take advantage of the potential benefits. Yeah, so you definitely support this. Um, I, yeah. I, I support the technology wholeheartedly. Okay, so would you buy and consume germ food once it's commercialized here? Well I would, and I have done when I've been to the United States, um, yeah. and as far as I could tell I've suffered no untoward consequence of that. Um, yeah. Uh, and what you may be aware of is that um, our farm animals are yeah. being fed with, with GM yeah. soybean and GM maize yeah. uh, because it's very difficult on the world market to buy um, soybean and maize animal feed, um, which is not, not GM. Yeah, So I think 80% of soybean are modified now. Something like that, that's right. Yeah. And I'm not aware of any step change in the health of our farm animals as a consequence of having been fed 
of the GM food. Okay. So, what do you think about the anti-GM action? Because I think it's everywhere. In UK, 2012, there was an action called Take Flower Back. Yeah. Everywhere in the world, there will be some anti-GM action. What do you yeah. think about that? On the one hand, I respect what the anti-GM demonstrators are trying to achieve. So what they're trying to achieve is an agriculture um, that is fair for the farmers, fair for the community, um, which is safe for the environment, yeah. safe for the farmers, safe for the consumer. Yeah. So um, what, what they are trying to achieve is the same as what I am trying to achieve. And I think it is true um, that um, we do need to rethink aspects of agriculture and how we deploy modern technology in agriculture. So I respect what they're trying to achieve, but I don't agree with them um, that resistance to GM is helping them to get what, where they want to be. Yeah. In fact, I think that they're, they would be better off embracing GM uh, because it would help them achieve what they want to achieve more easily than if they reject it. Okay, that's probably the last question. In China now, as far as I know, most yeah. of the people they generally have the idea that GM food equals low quality food and then once a food is labeled GM, it's supposed to be yeah. cheaper than others and it's not good yeah. for human health. What do you think yeah. about this? Well, I think they've been given misleading information if they think that that is the case. They only have to look in the United States um, where um, uh, food products based on GM soy and GM maize are throughout the food chain. Um, and it's not true that food in the United States is generally of low quality. In fact, in my experience, it's often of very high quality. So there's no reason, I don't think, to think that you should equate GM with low quality food. 以上就是本次采访的内容了。呃，在这里我想首先声明两点。第一点，大家在视频里看到的是真正的剑桥大学教授，并不是呃某些电视广告上找来的群众演员。他的个人信息在剑桥大学的官方网站上都可以查到，这点是做不了假的。第二点，我想声明的是，是并没有任何机构或个人出钱让我支持或者反对转基因，而且不管中国对。转基因态度怎么样？大卫教授每天还是该研究研究，该上课上课，不会影响到他个人的生活。也就是说，这个视频是完全没有利益驱使的。我想首先声明这两点，然后我在采访的过程当中，尽量不表达我个人的看法。大家可以很清楚的看到，大卫教授对转基因是个非常支持的态度。嗯，而且之之前提到了一份英国在今年年初交的一份报告上。也明确指出了欧洲目前对转基因的保守态度，对转基因的禁令是极端错误的做法。而且，英国已经向欧盟提出了自己坚定的支持转基因的意见。相信不久之后，转基因作物将会在英国以及欧洲合法化。呃，之前我曾经看过一篇新闻，说咱们的杂交水稻之父袁隆平教授站出来说，要客观公正的看待转基因。呃，当时我看到这篇。各种充斥着说啊，袁老师这是老糊涂了，晚节不保，临老了做出了这些糊里糊涂的事情。但是我，还是咱们的袁隆平教授也好，还是剑桥大学的大卫教授也好，是这些分站在科学科研第一线的专家们、教授们，都错了，都老糊涂了呢？还是那些恶意诋毁转机的人别有用心？我们生活当中充斥着各种各样的谣言，很有可能我在做的这个视频，我正在跟你说的话也是谣言。那么。就需要我们个人有争辩谣言的能力，需要对信息来源的可靠性有个清晰的判断。那么，究竟是在朋友圈里转发那种恐怖的图片以及非常夸张的信息更可靠呢，还是这样和剑桥大学教授面对面的谈话采访的信息更可靠？这就需要大家的判断力了。好了，本期的视频就是这样，咱们下次再见，拜。